What he says he will do, it is what he will do. Because God is not a man that he would fail. And he says that we are more than conquerors. That means that is who we truly are. How many of us know these thoughts? The SU of those days. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I am born again. More than a conqueror. That is who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. We are not singing it like conquerors. Is that how conquerors sing? Can if you're sure that you're more than a conqueror, if you're sure that you know who you are, can you sing it with that confidence to yourself? Let the devil hear you this morning. Want to go? Let us start. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away. I am born again, more than a conqueror, that is who I am. I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man, praise the Lord. That is who you are, that is who I am, we are more than conquerors. We are not victims. We are not losers. God says we are more than conquerors. It is not your situation that determines whether or not you are more than a conqueror. It is who God says you are. It is what God says about you that you are. Who is a conqueror, by the way? The um, dictionary defines a conqueror as one who wins a country in war, subdues a people, or overcomes an adversary. A conqueror is a winner. Somebody who has won in battle. So for one to be a conqueror, you must have gone through a battle. You can't just sleep and wake up and be a conqueror. It is only after a conflict, after a war, after a fight, that you can beat your chest and say, yes, indeed, I am more than a conqueror. So if you hear the word conqueror, that means there's been a conflict, there's been a war, there's been a battle, there's been some serious adversity that has arisen against somebody and that person has come, overcome it and has triumphed over it. Then that person can say that indeed they are conquerors. And of course, every one of us here, we are. Because we have fought many, many battles. Praise the Lord. The book of Job chapter 14 verse 1 says, Man who is born of woman is of few days and full of trouble. That's the summary of the life of any person on earth. From the day a child is born, that child is already, has entered into a war zone. And for all the days of any human being here on earth, the Bible says our days are few but full of troubles. John chapter 14 verse 30 Jesus speaking, he said, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Why are we full of, twice the world full of trouble? Why are we involved in warfare? Because we are living in enemy territory. This world is an enemy territory. It's, an, it's a war zone. Because we are living in the territory of our enemy, as it were. It's, a, it's like a... a it's like uh, Hamas trying to live in uh, Israel. And they want to take land. And they want to gain the territory. And they want to control. So you can imagine the, the battle. You can imagine the conflict that would be. In fact, I can assure us that our own is more fierce than them. Even Jesus himself says the ruler of this world. The devil is the ruler of this world. Is the devil your ruler? Is the devil your God? So definitely if the devil is not your ruler, he's not your God, and he's the ruler of this world, and you are in this world, that means you're living in enemy territory. And that is why you are always in. That's why there's always a battle, a conflict to go through. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4b says, Satan, who is the God of this world? Satan identified again and described as the God of this world. It wasn't always so, but that's not the message for today. 
Adam was the God of this world. And we know how Adam sold out and, and gave his right over the world to the devil and then the devil took over. But thank God that we have a God who loves us so much. We have a God who has not left us to, at the mercy of the enemy. The Bible says in John chapter 16 verse 33, Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Praise the Lord. In this world, Jesus said it clearly. The only thing, the only thing we are guaranteed of having in this world, tribulation, troubles, difficulties, challenges. He said in this world they would abound. Because the ministry of the devil as defined in John chapter 10 verse 10. He says that he has come to steal, to kill, to destroy. There is nothing else that this ruler of this world does. Imagine that you are in a country and then they call the name, uh, maybe... Um, a certain country, let me not use any um, real nation, and then they have a president, and then the president is called um, Satan, and then his, 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 his office is defined as a killer, a stealer, and a destroyer, and that's his JD, that's his job description, that's all that he does, there's no other work that he does, whatever the enemy does, gives anybody, ultimately, it is to destroy no matter what, if he gives fame, if he gives wealth, whatever the enemy gives anybody at the end of the day, the only thing the devil can do is destroy. So there's no gift of the enemy that gives life, that gives blessing. There's no blessing that can come from the devil. There is nothing that the enemy can give for free. Behind it, his, his duty, his core duty, which is to kill, to steal, and to destroy, would always play out at the end of the day. But thank God for Jesus who came to give us victory. He said, I have overcome the world. We are not fighting from a place of, of uncertainty. We are fighting an already fought and won battle. Yes, we are living in enemy territory. The devil is the God of this world. The devil is the ruler in this world. The devil has only come to steal, to kill, to destroy that's what he does all day, all year, all week, all century until his time is over and Jesus comes to take over. But then Jesus came that we might have life and have life more abundantly. Jesus came and he gave us, he fought the enemy and he defeated him and he subdued him. Remember the definition of a conqueror is say somebody who subdues. Somebody who conquers. And that's exactly what Jesus did to the enemy. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 says, When he had disarmed the rulers and the authorities, those supernatural forces of evil, I'm reading from the Amplified, evil operating against us, he made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captive in his triumphal procession, having triumphed over them through the cross. He conquered the devil. He nailed him on that cross. He finished him completely. In King James Version says he disarmed him. That means he took from the enemy the weapons, his power, and he made him powerless. And he said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he declared us more than conquerors because he took us as part of his victory. We are in his army. And then when he was living, he left us here on earth to rule and reign in his state. Jesus did not leave us here to be victims of the oppression of the enemy. He left us here to enforce the victory that he wrought for us on the cross of Calvary. Praise the Lord. Not for you and I to engage in the war, but to enforce victory. We can't fight the devil. What weapons do we have to fight him? What power do we have to fight him? All we need to do is to enforce the victory that Jesus, he disarmed him completely. It was a total victory, a complete victory on the cross of Calvary. And then Jesus said, all this power has been given to me and I give it to you in my name. 
Therefore, go forth and enforce this victory over the enemy that even though you are in the world, that is an enemy territory. You are not of the world. You are not a citizen of this world. You are a citizen of heaven that has superiority over the earth. And the host of heaven, they are backing us up. They encompass round about us. The Lord himself is cheering us with the host of heaven and he's saying, go my sons, go my daughters, rule and reign and, and, and enforce the victory that I wrought for you on the cross of Calvary. But unfortunately, how many Christians can say truly that we are reigning and winning in life? It seems like there are more victims than there are victors. It seems like there are more people that have been conquered, vanquished than those that are conquering. And this stems from two basic facts, ignorance and failure to enforce our rights. What you don't know, you can't benefit from. Like somebody said, since the beginning of creation, there's been electricity in existence. But for many thousands of years, the world was in darkness until somebody discovered the, the electricity. It wasn't when electricity was discovered that there was light. There had always been electricity. But many people had lived in darkness Many people have suffered in darkness. Many people had perished in darkness because they didn't know there was electricity. There had been the possibility to have cars to fly planes since the world was created. But it wasn't discovered until some people discovered it and that was only when people began to benefit from it. And that's how it is for us too. What you do not know, you cannot benefit from. So many Christians do not know or do not understand that truly God has, has conquered the enemy and has given us the victory. And that's why we go through life as if we are being victimized. We are being subdued. The devil that we are supposed to be trampling upon, the devil that we are supposed to be, you know, giving orders on what to do, we are terrified of him. He's harassing Christians here and there. And that's why Jesus said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. I pray that today and beyond, our eyes of understanding will be enlightened. That we would know who we truly are in the Lord. And that we will begin to live like the more than conquerors that we are. To be more than conqueror, it, it means that you are not just winning, but you are thriving. You win with, with a lot of benefits. You know, it's one thing to go to war, to win war and to come back and say, ah, I won. It's another thing to come back promoted. It's another thing to come back with bounties. It's another thing to like go out with nothing and then to come back with so much. That is what it means to be more than conqueror. Not just that you have conquered, but you are lifted, you are blessed, and you are increased on all sides. In Jesus' name. We must understand that it is God's will for us to triumph over every challenge of life. There is nothing that you are going through or that you will go through that God ever wants you to lose. Because, I mean, there's no place for loss because you've won already. You won the battle before the battle ever came up. That battle that is confronting you right now, whatever it is, whatever the nature of it, you were a victor before the battle started. Whatever will show up in your life tomorrow, you have already conquered because Jesus conquered every sin for us on the cross of Calvary many years ago. Before you and I showed up on this earth, before we were born, we were already more than conquerors. And all we need to do is to step into that victory and begin to walk in it. And the Lord will enable us to do so in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. In the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 13 from verse 31 to 33. It's a very interesting story. God will help us to illustrate what being more than a conqueror truly means as we study this. It will help us to point out some characteristics so that we can identify when we begin to live like conquerors or live like victims. Numbers chapter 13 from verse 31 to 33 says, But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out saying, the land through which we have gone as spies 
is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anna came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Then Numbers 14, 1 to 2. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. And all the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt. If only we had died in the wilderness. Remember this way, people that God had given a promise. When he took them from e Egypt, he told them he was taking them to a land flowing with milk and honey. He gave them every assurance that they were going to encounter enemies on the way, but that he had already given them the victory. That they should rise and contend against them because they would surely possess the land. But instead of them to focus on the promise, they were more focused on the obstacles. And what did they do? They complained. They had a bad report. They cried. They felt hopeless. You know, if you could pick out hopelessness, despair, grief, anger, fear, anxiety, helplessness, disappointment, negative thinking, negative talking, inferiority complex, were like grasshoppers in their eyes, complaining, murmuring, and all the negative emotion, you could go on and on and on. These are the characteristics of victims, not victors not conquerors. So whenever you see any of these things playing out in your life, see yourself exhibiting any of these characteristics, that means you are behaving like a victim and not a victor. Is it that there were giants on the land? Yes, certainly there were. All the things they said were true. But there's also, there were the facts. But there's also a truth that says there is a God who is greater and bigger than all this, who had given them an assurance the God who has shown himself great and mighty. The God who divided the Red Sea. The God who exhibited wonders in the land of Egypt and then they saw his hand. The God who saw them and sustained them. They were not farming. They were not doing any business. They were fed in the wilderness. The God who kept their clothes growing on their bodies. Who gave them water from the rock. They saw all this. And then when they saw giants in the land, they began to complain. How many of us are at a place where we feel that we are victim of life circumstances? Where you feel that I'm not able to overcome this? Where we are, you might not be complaining to anybody, but what is the state of your mind? Who do you see yourself? In compare, when you look at that situation, what are you saying? Are you like them? We may, you know, when we read this story, we wonder these children of Israel, they are this, they are that, but we are no different from them. We are no different. They say we are not able to. God brought us here. He will not take us there. We will perish in the land. And they murmured and they complained. And there were only two people who had a good report. Who said yes, despite the giants in the land, we are able to take the land. There were only two people who said yes, the land is bigger. Not bad. We have a God who is bigger than the giants in the land. We have a God who is bigger than the walls in that land. We have a God who has shown us his great and mighty power. And we know that he's able to take us to where he said he will take us through. And that's exactly what God wants you and I to be. More than conquerors. That when we look at the issues and situations of life, of us to despair, to, be, to seem helpless, to see ourselves as victims, we look at it and we rejoice because we see it as an opportunity for God to show himself strong and mighty on our behalf once again in the name of Jesus. And that's why the Bible says, count it all joy when you are confronted with trials and tribulation. Why? Because that is an opportunity for you to show that you are more than a conqueror. Because remember, when there's no conflict, when there's no war, you cannot have a conquer, conqueror. You cannot have a winner. So every time a conflict, every time any negative situation comes our way, it's an opportunity for us to show forth the mightiness, to show forth the power of the God that we serve. And from today, it shall begin to be so in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 to 4. A very interesting story too. 
And then we'll read from verse 6 to 8. It says, three days later, when David and his men arrived home at their town of Ziglag, they found that the Amalekites had made a raid into the Negev and, the, and Ziglag. They had crushed Ziglag and burned it to the ground. They had carried off the women and children and everyone else, but without killing anyone. When David and his men saw the reels and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. Verse 6, David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. And they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David asked the Lord, should I chase after this land of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. The Lord never spoke when David was crying, when David was weeping, until David encouraged himself in the Lord, until he turned back to his, to, to his God, the strength of his life, the one who has assured him of victory. And God said, yes, that is my son. Get up, because you will surely recover all. David lost everything in a single day. His whole estate, his entire property, everything he owned was burned to the ground. And then his family was taken away captive. Of course, in the natural, uh, uh, as, in, as, a, as a human being, the natural reaction would be to do what David did. Would be to lament, to weep. Would be to be in despair. You would even want to kill yourself. What am I living for anymore? I've lost everything. There's no hope. And of, that was what he did. And that was what everybody did. But it got them nowhere. It gave them no result until David remembered who he was. Until David remembered that this is me that slayed the Goliath through the power of God. Until David recalled how God gave him victory over the lion and over the bear. And he remembered all the promises of God. I say, wait, I'm more than a conqueror. Despite this situation. I know who I am and I know the God that is behind me. And then he arose. And then he turned back to the Lord. And then God said, yes, go forth. You would conquer and you recover all. And we know that at the end of the day, not only did David retrieve his family, David came back with bounties. David became richer and bigger than he was before the battle ever arose. And that is God's plan for you and I. That after going through any difficulty, any battle in life, we will come forth promoted. We will come forth lifted. Not only we will conquer, we will be exalted. Because he says that when we call upon him in the time of trouble, he will deliver us and he would honor us. God is the God who honors. Trials of life come to promote us. Trials of life come to increase us. They are not for our demotion. They are not for our shame. Whatever God allows to come our way is because it is time for your promotion. And then God wants to position you just like in secular schools. You can't have a promotion without an examination. That's how it is in the spiritual too. So let us cease looking at the challenges of life as things that have come to destroy us. Let us cease looking at ourselves as victims. Let us begin to see ourselves as who God says we are. That we are more than conquerors. And let's begin to live like people who are truly more than conquerors. It's a mindset sin. It's not a situational sin. It's not anything that has to do with our situation and our circumstances. It is what you believe in your heart. It is who you believe that you are. It is how you perceive God. It's how you understand the word of God and how you live the reality of the word of God. Praise the Lord. You don't have to wait until that situation turns around. Right where you are, you can dance the dance of a conqueror. You can talk like the conqueror. That was what Caleb and Joshua did. They say we are more than neighbor. And after people that looked at them, I say, what's wrong with you? I saw you standing beside one of them. You are not even up to his waist. And you are here saying I'm more than the conqueror. Because of course their focus was on God and not on their situations. Not on their circumstances. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, For as a man sinks in his heart, so is he. What do you think about yourself? Who do you think that you are? In your heart, are you thinking, poor old me? Poor wretched me? 
Poor, miserable me. Look at me, an orphan. Look at me without a job. I'm just suffering. Everybody is doing better than me. I'm sick. I don't even know how long I'll live. Who do you think? What do you think about yourself? What are your thoughts about yourself? The Bible says, as you think, that is who you are. If you see yourself as a victim, as a failure, as a nobody, that is who you are. But if you begin to seek your, see yourself through the eyes of faith, you begin to see yourself through the picture of the word of God, that you are a winner, you are more than conqueror, you are who God says you are, you will become that very sin that you say that you are. You will begin to live it, you begin to show forth in your life. In the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 22 to 25, the Bible said, then the multitude rose together against them, and the magistrate tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stock. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. They were beaten, their clothes were torn off, that means they were naked. I'm sure they had some broken bones in their body, they had bruises. Who would even give them water or food? That one was out of it, so they were starved, they were thrown into the inner dungeon, they were in shackles. But Paul and Silas did not see themselves as victims. They didn't see themselves as prisoners. They saw themselves as more than conquerors. Even though they were physically bound, but in the spirit, they were free men. They were valiant men. They were victorious people. And they were singing and praising. And they were praying. And God showed up. And that's exactly the life that God wants you and I to live. Our situation and our circumstances should not determine our demeanor. It should not determine our behavior and our attitude. In the midst of that challenge, remember who you are. Remind yourself, remind the situation and remind the devil, you can't break me uh, because I have won already. I am more than a conqueror. Despite the sickness, despite the, the circumstance, the physical circumstance, despite the fact that I have not eaten for three days, I am more than a conqueror. Despite the fact that I, the house rent is due in two days' time and I don't even have a cupboard to pay for it, I'm more than a conqueror. Despite the fact that my children have been home for some months because there's no money to pay fees, I'm more than a conqueror. Despite the fact that my husband has walked away, I don't even know where he is, I'm more than a conqueror. Despite the fact that I've been waiting for that particular breakthrough for so many years and I'm not even certain when it will happen. I am more than the conqueror because that is who God says that we are and that's how, who we truly are in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. You can't be a victim until you see yourself as such and you can't be a winner until you see yourself as such. We must cease looking at ourselves as victims of circumstances. You can't have God and be victimized. You can't have God and be a loser. Because he is God, the Almighty. He's the one who determines our victory. And he already says that we are more than conquerors. Romans chapter 8 verse 35 and 37. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? You can add all the other Nigerian problems. Just add them. I know if we are to make lists now we can make but they all come within this category. The Bible says, yet in all these things, in all, despite the sickness, despite that difficulty, despite that situation, in all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. Hallelujah. This alone is enough to make us to begin to dance, to begin to jump for joy. Let it not be because you have a physical alert that you rejoice. Let it not be because you got that proposal that you rejoice. Let it not be because you got that breakthrough, you got a doctor's report that your ill health, everything is okay that you rejoice. Let our rejoicing be in the fact that God, we know what God says in what God's promises concerning us. 
When I remember his promises, I shout hallelujah. Not when I look at the doctor's report. Not when I see my bank account. Let our joy be in the fact that we know who we are. We serve a God who has given us victory. Let us be people that stand gidigbada. No matter what comes our way, say no shaking. No, no demon can shake me. No situation can shake me. In everything, I am more than a conqueror. Bring it on. I stand firm, I strong because I know the God that I serve and I know that I have overcome and I'll continue to overcome in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. God gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. Always, no matter what the situation is, he has already given us the victory. He said we are victorious. He said we are more than conquerors. And that is exactly who we are. You know, I got to a place and I told myself, and I always tell myself, say, in life or in death, I win. If you get to that place, what can the devil hold against you? The worst that can happen is that you die, Abby. If you die, you go to heaven. If you live on this earth, you continue to win and reign. So anyhow the enemy comes, he can't get you. That was what the children, uh, in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, the Bible says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, hallelujah, our God whom we serve, who is this God that you serve? Is it the same God of, of Daniel? Is it the same God that we read about the wonderful things that he did in scripture and we are still seeing his wonders even in our time? He says, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace and he will deliver us from your hand. That should be our address to any situation that comes our way. You, this sickness, I'm not afraid of you. My God is able to deliver and he will deliver. You, this situation, you will not get me down. Because the enemy's plan is to make us miserable, to make it look as if God is not true, as if the word of God is a lie, to make us go through life with our heads down, our shoulders drooping, as if we are losers and not winners, as if we are failures, as if we are people that have been subdued and conquered. But God wants us to go through life with our heads head high, our shoulders up, singing through the midnight of our, of our lives, Singing and rejoicing. Better and greater than people who have won a billion naira lottery. Because indeed what we have is greater than anything that life can offer or anybody can offer. Praise the Lord. And then he proceeds in verse 18. He says, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor we will worship the golden image which you have set up. That even if this situation is not changed, even if we end up being burnt in the fire, our God is still God. We will never deny him. We will never cease pra praising him. We will not bow. You will not get us up. You will not break us. Job chapter 13 verse 15 said, Though he slays me, yet will I trust him. Even so, I will defend my always before him. We need to get to a point in life that nothing shakes our faith in God. Even if he slays me, even to the point of death, I trust him and I will keep declaring that I'm victorious. I'll keep declaring his word and his praise. I will stand firm in faith and I'll keep believing. Let our life not be de 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 determined by our situation and our circumstance. Let us not be happy because something good has happened or be sad because something bad has happened. Let our life be such that at all times, it looks as if we are celebrating something. Uh, Pastor and I were together yesterday. He was saying that he observed a particular musician that that one is always high. That at every time when you see him, it looks like he's, he has just smoked something. Of course, they are always high. But God wants us to be high in the spirit. Say, be drunk in the Holy Spirit always. We should be excited people that people would want to, you know, we should, our, our excitement, our joy and our peace should be so infectious that wherever we want, people would want, we drag, we attract people. 
We, we should be spreaders of joy and peace, not gloominess. We should not join the naysayers. Nigeria is bad, bad things are bad, bad. We don't know what will happen, happen, happen. That was exactly what the children of Israel did. Do. And at the end of the day, the Lord said, as I heard them speak into my ear, so shall they be. They all ended up in the wilderness. Murmurers die in the wilderness. Was it God's will for them to get to the promised land? Certainly. But they couldn't get there if they had not agreed with God. There is a God way and there is a world's way. The world's way say when you are in trouble, you cry. When you have difficulty, you complain. You stress. You are in despair. You, you murmur, you fight. But God's way say in the midst of trouble, you rejoice. You dance, you celebrate. That is how to live like a more than conqueror. And that's the life God wants us to live every day. That is our life such that people don't even know whether you have any problem. Because truly you don't have any problem. Do you know the day you cease to see that problem as a problem is no longer a problem? Problem is perception. No. It is not the thing that is the problem. It's not the event. It's not the, the act, the occurrence. It is the perception of the person. In, in the midst of it that makes it a problem or otherwise. Most of the letters Paul wrote that he said rejoice, particularly the letter of Philippians, uh, to the Philippians, he wrote it while he was in prison. He was not even sure he was coming out of prison. And he kept telling them rejoice. Again, I say rejoice evermore. What was his source of joy? His source of joy was his connection to God. His source of joy was the fact that he knew the Lord. He had a hope of eternal life with God. His source of joy was not the money. His source of joy was not a family. His source of joy was not a breakthrough. And God wants to be our only one and only source of joy. If we are Christians and our joy, our excitement is dependent on what we have physically, then we are of most men miserable. That means we will never have that joy. But if our joy is the fact that we have Jesus, that he has delivered us, that we have eternal hope with him, and that we are going to live in heaven with him forever. It's enough to make anybody be excited always, like somebody who is always, like as if you wake up in the morning and give you a shot of cooking. It's even more exciting than that. May the Lord give us understanding of what our salvation means. <laughs> Nothing in this life can compare with it. At the most, how long do we have to stay in this world? Let's even assume that that problem you have does not go and it stays. Pata pata in the next 70 years, I don't think there's anybody in this hall who will still be alive. And 70 years is like this. It will soon come and go and then we are all gone. But we have a God who will take us to a place where there's no weeping, where there's no crying, where there's no sighing. Can we begin to celebrate that life now? Can we remember who we are that indeed we are more than conquerors? In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. It's a decision. You make up your mind and you tell yourself from today, there's nothing the enemy will bring my way that will make me shed tears of bitterness, of pain, of agony. I rejoice always because I am more than a conqueror. And as we begin to see that, we will see how victory will become a, a norm for us. Every day to be victory or victory because God will always show up where his name is exalted. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. So as we round up this morning, I want us to sing this song, our Sunday school song, with understanding. Let us keep singing it to yourself all week. Remind yourself of who you are. Convince yourself that this is who you are. Even if you are crying, be crying and be singing that song and be crying. And then soon that cry will turn to laughter in the name of Jesus. He says, I'm a victor all the time. I'm a winner, not a loser. I'm a success, not a failure. I'm the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. I'm a victor all the time. I'm a winner, not a loser. I'm a success, not a failure. I'm the head and not the tail. You don't know that song? I'm a victor all, all the time. All the time, no matter what is happening, I'm a victor. I'm a winner. I am the head. I'm not the tail. If you like, come last in your class. Carry that result. I say I'm the head and not the tail. I'm a success. If you like, score, 
score two percent or twenty percent in jam, say I'm a success. I'm not a failure. If you like, let them come out. You be the the most loyal person in your class. Begin to declare that you are who God says you are, and in no time you will become it. Refuse to accept the picture the devil is painting to you. Refuse to accept that situation as your lot. Refuse to see yourself as a victim. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory always. In the name of Jesus.